everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 164. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out my podcast. I'm so excited that you guys decided to spend a little bit of your day chatting about knitting, spinning, and hand dyeing yarn with me. So, yeah, it's been a week since I last recorded. Uh, last weekend, this past weekend, uh, if you've been following the podcast, you know that I I had a trunk show uh, at Gage Intention. And last week, there just weren't enough hours in the day for me to record. Uh, if you have a podcast of your own, you probably know that it takes some time to record, edit, and get your episodes up on the interwebs. So um, yeah, it did. Um, it, it does take a good por uh, chunk of my day to record and publish an episode. So I decided to prioritize and push the episode, push recording back one week. So, but the good news is I have so much more exciting things to talk with you guys about this week. So yay, I guess I get, I shall get right into it. Um, okay, so I guess I will just do a quick recap of the trunk show, which happened on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the September 12th and the 13th. So I was there both days and it was just as, as always, it's always really wonderful uh, doing a trunk show at Gage Intention. It's one of my favorite uh, yarn shops in Brooklyn. Uh, they have, they started out as a pop-up shop, uh, started by Michelle Wong. Uh, she's a knitwear designer. You may know her, uh, her work. Uh, she does, uh, she does some design for Brooklyn Tweed, Wool People. Uh, she's amazing. And I was so excited when she decided to open up Gage Intention because Greenpoint, Brooklyn, needed a yarn shop, a new one, <laughs> especially in Greenpoint, close to where, you know, I used to live and still close to where I live now. So all good things. And Michelle invited me back to do a trunk show. So yeah, Saturday, there was an amazing turnout. Uh, and I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Maria of the Subway Knits podcast, Allison, uh, who works at Gage Intention, um, Dana, Rachel, you guys know who you are. I'm just going to name names because I love you guys. Um, and I have, a, I don't want to miss anybody, but I know I'm going to be missing somebody because there were just too many people, but uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to, uh, also Marsha, Susie, Tanya, uh, Jenny, Carolyn, and Alex, uh, and Carolyn's daughter whose name escapes me. But anyway, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, and especially to Maria and Allison for helping me set up because that, uh, was no easy task. <laughs> so um, yeah, you guys are amazing and I really just loved having you there. Seeing you, meeting you in person, um, if I've never met you before or if I have, it was it was just so much fun. Uh, and Nina from The Knitting Expat showed up. Uh, she's She has uh, The Knitting Expat podcast and she was in the city and decided to visit while I had my trunk show. So that was really exciting. Um, I actually met up with her earlier in the week, which I'll talk about a little later. And uh, so, yeah, it was just so, yeah, it was just a really wonderful time. Um, and the Renegade Craft Festival, which was happening uh, down the street at the Brooklyn, I think, I think it's called the Brooklyn Expo Center. It's on Franklin Avenue in Greenpoint. Anyway, it was a couple blocks over, so there was definitely some overflow from that event uh, into uh, Gage Intention, which is really cool because there were a couple of people that showed up that never heard about my yarn, and they actually bought something, and it, it was a really cool feeling. So just a really fun time all around. Sunday, it was a little quiet um, because Sunday is Sunday. It was raining, I think, and then, yeah, Sunday is always a quiet day, but there was still a really nice uh, turnout. And I may have been geeking out a little too much because this is the first time that I ever used grid wall <laughs> to display my yarn, uh, which was an amazing investment. I'm so happy that I, I purchased them. Um, I got them online and basically what grid wall is, they're just these wire stands with hooks that you can arrange and just display yarn. You've seen them all over yarn festivals, I'm sure, but um, it, it was just really nice to have that. Um, and yeah, I may have geeked out a little too much over it, but anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess if there's anything else I want to talk about, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. <sighs> but anyway, 
Yeah, and we oh, we also periscoped. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, periscope is the latest and the greatest social media thing that's going on. It's it allows you to broadcast live events, uh, and it's available. And people it uses your Twitter account, so you log in with your Twitter account, and then you can broadcast any anything with your smartphone live, and then it pings everybody who's following you, and they can all tune in. And uh, after you're done recording, whoever missed it has about 24 hours to replay what you recorded. So it was really fun. Uh, I love getting to share the shop with you guys uh, and showing you, you know, we were just having so much fun, um, just being silly and playing with yarn and yeah, it was great. <laughs> so I was actually very, very tired. I may have gotten, I, I, the night before, I only got maybe like six hours of sleep. I fell asleep at around 2 a.m. in the morning and then got up at 7.30 a.m. to finish reskeining things and labeling things. And I, I must admit, I was a little sleepy. But <laughs> when, I, when that happens, usually I get a little silly. So I don't know. I think it panned out pretty well. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I digress. Um, so yeah, I will move on to, I did purchase stuff. While I was there, I could not resist treating myself to some nice little shinies. So um, I will share those with you in a little bit later. But first, let me show you what I've been working on. Uh, but first, let me have some water because I feel like I've been I've been rambling. Um, and I am catching up with sleep as well because last week was nuts, and I was really working working hard and long. So I'm to, this week. I'm taking it a little bit easier. But still, I'm, I'm very tired. Oh, anyway. Um, okay, so I have not finished my fairy hair socks. I'm still working on those, but um, this is the second sock. It's out of, on, out of my Volca base, which is a merino nylon cashmere on, uh, in the fairy hair colorway, which I hand dyed. And I am all, I'm at the toe decrease. And this is basically just a basic sock, uh, one by one ribbing, cuff down, Reinforced heel, um, heel turn, and then I'm just decreasing the toe on here. And these will be the model for my revamped version of my favorite po my favorite sock pattern, which is a free uh, download on Ravelry if you're not familiar. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say about this. Carbons U.S. size 1.5. Uh, on my, you know, they're, I think, 40 inch circulars. Anyway, nothing too exciting about that, um, except carbons. They're really, really awesome. If you haven't worked with them, I highly recommend them. <sighs> okay, what else? Um, and living in this hand in this bag, project bag that I made, I am obsessed with this fabric, you guys. Um, it's just these, gr like, they're kind of like retro illust fashion illustrations, I want to say. And they're wearing these beautiful ball gowns and day dresses. And on this side, just this ma magnificent pink ball gown. Um, and I made like a little progress keeper stitch marker with like a little flower. And then on the inside, I actually bought this by accident. Uh, the fabric in here is this double gauze. And I, I love the print. I thought it was 100% cotton, but obviously I did not read the description. I just went click add to cart because I love the print. I thought it would be a great, um, just a great lining for a fa for a project bag. And it turns out I ordered the double gauze, which is kind of is a new to me fabric. Um, I've seen it, but I've never worked with it. And oh my gosh, I love it. It is so soft, and it's lovely for a. a a project bag liner um, so I I definitely want to order more to make some for the shop um, so be on the lookout for that and I did not I did not make any uh, project bags for the trunk show I was planning to but it just did not work out because again yarn is my main product that I make for my shop and the project bags are kind of just a side thing where if I have time I will offer them in the shop but it just, I just did not have enough time. So I only had two project bags to show for. I'm like, there's no point in me bringing only two. So I, I just didn't bring any project bags. But anyway, there will be more in the shop soon. So keep a lookout for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> so living in that project bag is my featherweight cardigan. So I have been plowing away on this like nobody's business, you guys. Um, 
Here's the right way. And I've been alternating skeins as I go. I probably don't need to, but I just, for my own sanity, I have been alternating skeins. So the sleeves have been detached, um, or joined, I should say. <laughs> and I've knit all this. So I believe I'm about 18 inches past the the armhole. So I'm gonna, I'm actually on the ribbing right now. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna go for about maybe four more inches on the ribbing and then I get to knit the sleeves. So I am definitely gonna have a Rhinebeck sweater and I am excited. I could not be more excited. And the color, sorry, I feel like I'm rambling. Um, again, did not get enough sleep last night. Uh, so the colorway is Gashley Crumb, my Edward Gorey inspired colorway. Um, and the base is, what is it, Halo Alpaca, which I have to look at the fiber content, but I believe it is 60% superwash merino, 20% superfine alpaca, and then 20% nylon. And it's quite hairy, but I really love the way it's knitting up and it's going to be super warm and super soft. This is so soft, you guys. I, yeah. Yeah, I can, words cannot describe. So I'm really loving the way this is knitting up. And yeah, I can see why Molly of a homespun house has knit, I don't know, I think she's she's knit three of them already. I'm pretty sure three, but we were talking about it yesterday and she was just waxing poetic about how amazing this pattern is. And as you know, if you follow, uh, watch the last episode, uh, I'm hosting a Countdown to Winter Featherweight Cal. And it kicked off at the beginning of September and it's going all the way through until the first day of winter, which I believe is either December 22nd or 23rd. Correct me if I'm wrong, but check the show notes and the uh, the Ravelry thread. Mm, excuse me. So, hang on. Um, so yeah, and what else? should I say about this? I am using my Carbons Interchangeables on US size 6, and I love working with them, as I mentioned. So yeah, and as I mentioned, I am also alternating skeins. So just going one by one on those, um, or alternating skeins every right side row. Um, so yeah. Oh, goodness, lots of tangles, lots of tangles. Any hooser. Um, okay, so there's that. And I did not finish my Verdure shawl. I did not put it, since I last showed it to you, I did not work on it and I feel horrible. Um, I really wanted to have it done for the trunk show, but it just, it did not happen. And I really want to have it done. I want to finish it. It is such a beautiful shawl, as I mention every week, and I want to have it done. I want, it, yeah, I want to finish it, you guys. Um, but I think I set a too hard goal for myself. Like once I set, goals like that like okay every every day I have to knit three repeats uh or something to that extent it my brain just won't do it I'm I feel like I'm kind of like Danny from the Little Bobbins podcast where um she whenever she's told to do something she just doesn't do it yeah and when I tell myself to do something nine out of ten I won't do it so Danny if you're watching I totally get it <laughs> so um so yeah, that's that's how we roll. Uh, okay, so then there's that. And then the other thing that I've been working relentlessly on is my Lumpy Space Shawl by uh, West Knits, so Stephen West. And as I mentioned, I, I'm not a huge fan of Stephen West's patterns, but I saw Carleen of the Made with Carleen G podcast, which is an excellent podcast if you haven't checked it out. Uh, I saw hers in person and I fell madly in love with it and I had a cast on my own immediately so I did <laughs> uh, and I've had I've been having so much fun knitting this so I finished the first half of the shawl there's I, it's divided into sections and this is the first section so this is one half of the first section hmm, excuse me and then I knit the other half which is identical it's just all squished up on one circular needle but it's it's the same thing as this side and if you can imagine the mirror image of this is the wrong side if you can imagine the mirror image of this on the other side there is going to be a diamond shape knitted going that way 
into this. So it's going to be a funky design or a funky shape, like not your average triangular shawl or rectangular stole. It's going to be diamond shaped. Uh, and the middle portion of this is going to be in this lovely skein of fiddle knits. Uh, I'm blanking on which colorway it is. If, I believe it was Experiment at Dusk on her Aria face. Okay, so good, I remember that. <laughs> so there's just kind of like this uh, subtle um, bronze sparkle in there. And this has been languishing in my stash for quite a few years. And I've never known, it never... I've never been inspired to cast on anything with it, just stare at it and ogle it and fondle it. So when it came to uh, casting this on, I put a bunch of skeins or colorways that I love together. And this one finally called out at me. It was like, knit with me. And I'm like, yes, I finally get to use you. Um, so that will go in there. And then the yarn that is actually in here is, um, Oh goodness, what is it? Bijou Basin Ranch, Bijou Basin Ranch, uh, Himalayan Trail, which is, I have the label here. I got this at Rhinebeck last year. It's um, Himalayan Trail, uh, 75 Yak Down, 25% uh, super fine merino, and it is super soft in the, I think, sky colorway. This is the same colorway that, um, Molly of a homespun house used to knit her Whispering Pines shawl, her first one that she did, um, which is beautiful, beautiful, kind of very light blue cyan, I want to say. And then the contrasting color is my hand spun that I used for, um, what is it? It's a uh, fondant fiber fuzzling. Uh, and I had hand spun that I used to cast it on. And then I ran out of that one, which Surprise had surprisingly a lot of yardage. That's one thing I have to say about Deb. Uh, she she's the dyer and per magician of sorts behind um, uh, fondant fibers. So um, she oh I have to say she always gives you a lot of fluff to work with. So you get a pretty good mileage out of uh, one tiny fuzzling. So I had thankfully I had a similar color, slightly darker than the first one that I used to knit with it, but I had a backup. And this is how much that I have left over. And I have no idea what the fiber content is in these uh, in her fuzzlings. She doesn't really label them. But it's soft, it's sparkly, and just magical. So, uh, yeah. Yay! And I don't know if you can see. Where is it? Yeah. I think about right here is where I did the color change. So you can, it, it kind of has like this, rain, I don't know, gradual gradient type thing going on. And you really can't tell that it's a different fiber at all. So... I'm so glad that that worked out. And the other final contrasting color that I'm going to be using with it is uh, Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the Fossil colorway. And I did actually purchase a second skein of this because I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to use this colorway and this yarn as the applied border for my lattice shawl that I cast on a while ago that I have not finished uh, by Mar uh, Maria Monska of the Stitched in Sweden podcast. And I am mentioning so many podcasts this week, guys. So I will try and link to them in the show notes uh, if I remember. But anyway, uh, yes. So <laughs> that's where I am with that. Uh, and I'm having so much fun with it. Um, I feel like there was something I wanted to talk about. Oh, about the uh, countdown to winter, Cal that I'm having with the featherweight. And this shirt is falling everywhere, sorry. Um, hang on, wait a second, what did I, oh, prizes. Prizes, yes, I have prizes. That, uh, maybe I'll discuss those in a, in a future episode, but I do have some give really, really awesome giveaway prizes that I'm very excited about. Maybe I'll talk about them at the end of the episode, but anyway. Um, so I believe that is it. For, I'm looking at my show notes. Yeah, that, that is it for what's on the needles um, at the moment. No finished objects, but I do have some projects that I am itching to cast on already. Not that I have, you know, enough on the needles already, but uh, when I was at Gage Intention, Michelle has all of her, her, um, sample knits hanging on the wall and she does a lot of sweaters she does a lot of uh hats and accessories but mainly sweaters sweaters are her thing and she had the stone cutters uh sweater hanging on the wall if you're not familiar with it i will try and post a photo of it in here but it's this magnificent cabled 
pullover. It's absolutely stunning and beautiful. Uh, and I want, I want to cast this on immediately. Um, so I'm, I've kind of been browsing the interwebs. I'm sorry, I call the inter internet the interwebs because I find it hilarious. So I know it's called the internet. I just love calling it the interwebs. So yeah, just FYI, <laughs> disclaimer. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've been doing a little research and I'm debating between some Quince and Co. Uh, Lark or what was the other one? Some Cascade 220. Uh, I saw some really nice mauves. <laughs> Again, with the mauve, I don't know, but it would be nice to have a really nice cozy mauve sweater with cables. So I'm I'm really looking forward to casting that on, but definitely after my featherweight cardigan is all done and finished and ready for Rhinebeck. Because um, yes, I will have a Rhinebeck sweater. So yeah, I cannot wait. Uh, and then she also just released a hat pattern, which I'm over the moon excited about. Um, it's called the Quadri, and I believe she designed the pattern for the Plucky Knitter. Plucky Knitter, yes. Um, and it's, this, again, this magnificent cabled hat with a pom-pom on, on top. Uh, so those are two things that I'm really excited to cast on. Um, so stay tuned for that coming down the pike. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna move on to spinning because there has been some spinning. <laughs> because while I was there, vending, uh, you know, during downtime, we all just kind of, me and whoever was there, we all just kind of huddled around the table and we're knitting and chatting. And then I, I was working on my featherweight cardigan, kind of got a little tired of uh, doing stockinette stitch, but I could not help looking at all the fiber that Michelle has on the shelves. It was just these awesome, sparkly, crazy colored fiber bumps by Spun Right Round. There was two, two, two fiber, um, Oh my gosh, it was just, it was incredible. And I kind of got bit by the spinning bug, <laughs> if you will. So, uh, and they actually had some, you know, beginner spindles there. And I really just wanted to spin something. And I figured, you know what? <laughs> Why not? I worked hard. I'm just going to treat myself. This is, this is how I rationalize and it's not really great. But anyway, I had to get this magnificent bump of fun right round. And I apologize if this is currently blowing out your screen right now, but how could you not want to spin with this? Um, it's insane. I mean, it just, it goes from this insane hot pink with noil and sari silk in here to this bright yellow, and then this gorgeous gray. So, I cannot resist. So again, this is Fun Right Round. Um, what's your label? And it's merino, uh, merino silk and glitz, approximately four ounces. So I don't know the percentage or anything like that, but there is merino silk and glitz in here. Clearly, you can see that. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, uh, yes. So and I happened. To, okay, so my chair. The floor in this room is not quite level, and I have a chair with wheels on it, so every time I back up, the chair just keeps going back. It's ridiculous, so I've got to, I've, I've got to fix that. But anyway, I, I purchased this uh, Shack High Low Spindle. It's, yes, by Shack uh, High Low, and you can use it as a high whirl or you can use it as a low whirl. So like flip it upside down and use this as kind of like a, a, a hitch and spin it. Um, I'm just using it as, as a high top whirl drop spindle. Uh, and it was about $22 and I've kind of always wanted this. I don't know why, just because I have a lot of, I have a lot of drop spindles already and by no means are considered beginner. They're kind of handcrafted and well-made and this is pretty much a beginner spindle, I would say. but works very well, has an excellent price point, and is beautiful. It's a standard spindle, uh, and I would highly recommend it if you are looking to get into drop spindling and you're not sure you want to invest in, say, a Spanish Peacock spindle or a Bodsworth or a Golding, and you just want to get a feel for it. This is an excellent spindle to start out with. Um, it's a 2.5 inch whorl and 1.1 ounces, so yeah, if you are looking to dive into the rabbit hole that is spindling, I would go with this one. So, um, but again, it shows you how you can, you know, hook it up. 
so we can get it going. Anyway, so I purchased those together and started spinning it on this and it's it's gonna be art yarn. It is going to be this awesome hand spun skein of art yarn. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to knit with it. I think I'm once it's done, I'm just going to put it on my shelf and bat my eyes at it and fondle it occasionally. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna spin all the pink on here and then once I get to the art and then take it off and then set it aside and then spin the orange and the gray. And once I'm all done with that, I'm going to ply it on my wheel, to, uh, to ply it together on my wheel to get this really cool kind of like contrasty art yarn thing. So that's really fun. And I need to put a dent in my, my sock uh, spackle, which ended, uh, I announced the winner last week. So yay, congrats again on the winner. And, uh, but yeah, I have to finish mine. I have one more bobbin to spin. That's all. And my microphone keeps coming down. So, uh, so yeah, I've really got to put a dent in that. I will someday, <laughs> just not today. <sighs> anyway. Okay. So that, that is it for spinning. Um, and since I'm talking about stash and, you know, acquisitions already, I guess I will move on to my other acquisitions, which I purchased. Uh, the Wednesday before the trunk show, I ended up meeting up with Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast, as I mentioned, uh, and we had such a really lovely time. Uh, we decided to meet up at Brooklyn General, one of my favorite local yarn shops in Brooklyn. Uh, it's based in, let's say, Boreham Hill? or Red Hook. It's around that area. Uh, if you're familiar with Brooklyn, it's right, it's very close to Ikea, but uh, it, it's this cute, adorable little shop uh, in Brooklyn. And you've heard me wax poetic about it before, but it's just, it's my hand, one of my hands down favorite yarn shops to go to. And while I was there, uh, Mina just made out like a bandit. She purchased like two sweaters worth of or two sweaters worth of yarn uh, and I really just didn't know where to begin because I had no projects in mind and when that happens my brain just kind of implodes when I'm presented with a plethora of yarn choices and I usually end leave with I usually end up leaving with nothing so but this time I kind of fell in love with a, um, a skein of Madeline Tosh which I've kind of been ogling for a while and just never got around to purchasing but it was there and I'm like when in Rome, um, I'm full of one-liners today, guys. Um, but yes, I ended up purchasing this lovely skein of Tosh Sock, which is 100% Superwash Merino Wool in Steam Age. Muted mauve, muted purple, muted teals and grays. You know it had to come home with me, so it did. Uh, yeah, so... I'm in love with this. It will probably be a shawl or socks. I don't know. Right now, I just kind of want to sit and stare at it, let it languish and marinate in my stash a little bit. Uh, but I can see myself casting something on with this soon, um, you know, in the near future. And of course, I had to get this uh, Brooklyn General project bag to just just to have because I wanted it. <laughs> but uh, and then of course I how to get a unicorn tail because I was actually looking for uh this one colorway by Madeline Tosh called Cathedral and they did not have it but they did have it in a unicorn tail which I've never purchased before I in hindsight I kind of should have purchased more unicorn tails because I feel like everyone just buys a little like little combinations of unicorn tails but no I just got one <laughs> so yeah see unicorn tail do, 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 do. And this is the cathedral colorway, as I mentioned, and it's 52 yards, uh, which is 47 meters. And it's her uh, Tosh Merino Light base, uh, which is a single ply. Uh, and it's 100% superwash merino wool. And it's lovely. So I definitely want to track down a whole skein of this because it is absolutely beautiful. So, yes. Um, so yeah, that is what I came away with. Uh, but then Mina, the amazing, amazingly awesome person that she is, uh, gave me a little goodie bag. <laughs> so Mina, you do too much, seriously. Uh, she gave me a goodie bag full of candy. Lots of candy in here of these uh, toffee 
little toffee candies, different flavors, and some tea, some hibiscus uh, Lipton, which I love hibiscus, lovely. Um, and then some alocose, alocose, I could be pronouncing that totally wrong, uh, black currant tea, 100%. So that was really delicious. And then some jasmine tea, which I love. I love jasmine tea. So I have a thing blown out. So that looks yummy. And then she made, as you know, Mina has a, a shop on online, an Etsy shop where she makes hand, uh, where she sews handmade bags. And she made this lovely, beautiful purple and green, her favorite colors and mine too. <laughs> Lots of mauve in here. Mina knows me. Um, it's a beautiful project bag, very well made and just absolutely stunning. So Mina, thank you so much. And here's her tag, Mina Makes. So I will post a link to her, her shop in the show notes um, for you guys to check it out. And she was also super generous enough to offer another project bag as a giveaway prize. So it's fruit. How awesome is that? I love the fruit. It's orange, pineapple, strawberries, cherries, apples, I think tomatoes. Tomatoes are fruit too, right? Yes. <laughs> Grapes, and it's just super fun. So this will be a giveaway prize for one of the winners of the Countdown to Winter Featherweight Cal. So one of you viewers will win. Joining in the Cal will, uh, will win this lovely, fun project bag by Mina Makes. Thank you so much again, Nina. This is really cool. So it's the inside, it's simple white, and yeah, it's just so lovely and sturdy and awesome. So, and she also threw in some what is it? mini skeins, and I, I was looking, I didn't even open them yet, and I saw. Um, let's make sure my microphone is on right, so you guys can hear me. And I didn't even open them, uh, and I saw one of the skeins in there, and I knew exactly what it was. Uh, the Pond, the Pond colorway from Baron Vola, Vola, I think I'm pronouncing Baron Vola Pond, um, which, oh gosh, and Regina, uh, Hebsblatt, uh, Regina, who has a podcast. <laughs> Everyone has a podcast. What's going on? Um, <laughs> she hosted a, a pond along. So everyone, uh, I unfortunately did not join in. I tried getting a skein of this, but it sold out immediately. I'm guessing because of the pond along, but uh, I saw this in there and I was like, yes, I scored some pond. So thank you, Mina. This is really cool. And some other really, really lovely, lovely skeins. I think this is from a pair of socks she just finished knitting that she showed off on her latest podcast. I could be wrong. The wool barn. Oh, I have wool barn. Yes. And it is the sock, uh, the sock yarn. So I've been meaning to get my hands on a pair of wool, um, on some wool barn as well. So lady, you are hooking me up. So anyway, okay. And speaking of goodies, as if that wasn't enough, uh, while I was at the trunk show, Tanya, uh, who is a viewer and soon to have a podcast, I think. Uh, but anyway, she was so lovely. She showed up and gifted me a little goodie bag, which I was just, I was speechless. I, I did not know what to say, but um, she was so lovely and amazing. She gave me this beautiful handmade project bag. And inside, of course, butterflies and some polka dots. They're so cute. Um, oh goodness. And it smells amazing by the way. So, um, so yes, inside she, she made little yarn nuggets. Uh oh, this one came undone. Ah, Miss Babs coffee break. Just really pretty. And she labeled everything so beautifully. People and your packaging. Seriously, I gotta get, as I mentioned, I have to up my game when it comes to mini skeins. Um, there are a lot in here. Uh, let me see, oh, this one's fun. Let me see. <clears throat> Three Irish Girls, Father Time, Glen Haven. I think the color is called Father Time. And then, let me see, this one is Hedgehog Fibers in Pheasant, Pheasant Sock, which is really pretty. 
<clears throat> excuse me, I have no idea where that came from. Um, uh, sleep Season, Sand Dollar. I love Sleep Season yarn. You guys have excellent tastes in yarn, let me just say. And then there's another one here. I think that's it. Yes, that's it. So really, really beautiful. And she also gave me some tea. Let me see. Da, 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 da. And to go with my tea, this is where she really kind of made me want to cry because this is so beautiful. I don't even want to like unwrap it because it is so pretty. Um, but Tanya got me this beautiful, beautiful teacup. How pretty is that? I don't know what to say. This is just, Tanya, you, you really do too much. <laughs> Thank you. So I am very excited to um, enjoy my next cup of tea in this. I, I've just been just ogling it. I It's been sitting on my desk and I've just been kind of like, you're so pretty. <laughs> so this was really, really, really nice to receive. So thank you so much, Tanya. Um, and then uh, Jenny, who also stopped by, you guys are, you know, it's like Christmas in July. Um, he stopped by, Jen, who stopped by, I don't know if you've seen her, uh, she's Tiny Paper Foxes on, um, on Instagram, and she posted a beautiful sweater or pullover. Um, I'm blanking on the name of it, but she knit the sweater out of my Mexican uh, hot chocolate colorway, and it has a uh, brown collar made of Madeline Tosh, and I was just blown away by it. And she stopped by. Uh, she came to my last trunk show, and she stopped by again this time. And uh, you know, we hung out, we chatted. It was really fun. And then before she left, she gave me two uh, bags of Summer Down Pure Mint. It's some new to her tea that she really enjoyed and thought she'd give me a couple tea bags. So English spearmint and chamomile chamomile tea. The, 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 I can't talk. <laughs> chamomile tea. Um, so it's English chamomile uh, grown on our Hampshire farm, dried and infused with our pure spearmint oil. So this looks really yummy. So I think I'm going to try this in my new tea cup soon. So it's just been so hot and I don't know, I haven't gotten around to drinking tea yet. But anyway, so I was just really, really, I don't know, speechless, you guys. Thank you so much for just showing up, coming and spending time hanging out with me. Uh, it was just, I, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. It's, ah, guys, anyway, <laughs> I'll stop getting all misty now. Um, so anyway, what was I saying? <sighs> okay. <laughs> So, all right, I guess I'm going to move on to shop update. So if you're not interested, I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Um, but there will be a small shop update this Friday. I had a big one. Uh, whatever I didn't sell at the trunk show went in the shop uh, this past Monday. And I'm kind of taking it easy this week. I'm doing a little, you know, I'm obviously working, uh, but just not as intensely as I have, as I have been this past week. Uh, I've just, you know, just want to catch up on sleep and get some rest and just enjoy myself uh, because I literally had no downtime last week. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in Blather, but uh, I will have a small shop update on Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I may have some project bags. I may have uh, a few skeins for sale, um, but the next big shop update will be the following Friday. Uh, and I don't know what date exactly that is, but watch the website and you know check in on Facebook and what have you. Um, and all the outlets, basically, the website basically is the best place where you can pretty much keep up with when I'm going to have my shop updates. I guess I'll just move right along into Blather. So normally, like prepping for a trunk show is not that stressful for me. Um, you know, it's like so long as I dye enough every day and just you know set aside what I'm going to put aside for the shop update or you know what have you. Uh, as long as they stick to your schedule, normally it's. A no-brainer whatever but uh, it was Labor Day weekend me and Dennis wanted to get away for the weekend just a quick getaway so we ended up going to uh, Asbury Park and which is in New Jersey uh, I've never been there before except maybe in college I did a quick drive-through with friends and this is way before I just remember it was late at night and everything was run down and it's not what it is today. It definitely went through some kind of makeover or overhaul. So it had, kind of has like the feel of uh, Coney Island where it's that old school boardwalk uh, atmosphere. It's very 1920s and 
a lot of you know original architecture is still there along the boardwalk but it's definitely gone through some kind of um it's going through like a resurgence of um tourism if you will uh if that makes any sense but you know they're uh renovating everything they're adding new shops and it's just this it's it was actually a lot of fun we spent one night there uh at the berkeley hotel which is this really beautiful renovated uh, hotel that I'm sure was built in the 1920s or something, but it had a beach view and uh, we walked all along the boardwalk. We had really yummy food and ice cream. So we came back Sunday night and then on Monday, Dennis's cousins had some extra tickets to the US Open. And I've never been to the US Open before <laughs> and I'm not normally a sports person, but by any means. And I just, I could not pass up going to the US Open. I'm sorry. It was just, I don't know. I, the thought of going there and seeing tennis, a live tennis match just kind of excited me. So I could not pass it up. And we went and we had a blast. We saw two games. Um, the game started at 11 and we stayed till maybe about 4.30. And then I turned to Dennis and I'm like, I have got to go home and do some work. So, uh, but we saw two matches, uh, one between, oh goodness, I cannot remember. Vanessa and Victoria, I can't remember their their last names, but uh, it was two women playing and then there was another match uh, between, oh gosh, Donald something and Vorinka. <laughs> you guys who know sports probably know what I'm talking about, but anyway, it was really exciting. We had great seats um, and it was just, it, we took the subway there and it was it was just a really lovely day. A really hot day, um, but thankfully the shade just kind of, after a couple hours just kind of covered us. So we were able to stay cool. Uh, I brought sunblock, my SPF 100. Um, unfortunately, I did not bring any sunblock with me to Asbury Park, which is probably why you notice I have a little bit of a tan. <laughs> I only had like SPF 30. I was really trying not to get a tan this summer, but I guess I really didn't. It didn't happen anyway uh so yeah there's that and then that night our friends were coming in from san fran and we were hosting them so i had like um between four o'clock and seven o'clock i had that little bit of time to get some dyeing done um i got a little like all between all these things that were happening like hosting our friends going to the tennis match going away for vacation i was trying really hard to get so much done in that little bit of time so you can imagine um so yeah, there was that. And then on Wednesday, I met up with Mina, which I had planned for a while. So, and I was really excited to meet up with her. So could not pass up on that. Um, and I really needed a break from work and getting things done and anything. It was just everything. It was just really lovely to meet up with her. And I'm so glad that we did, uh, obviously. And then I had Thursday and Friday to get whatever I needed to get done, done. <laughs> so I made it happen. I made it happen. I may have lost a little bit of sleep over it, but I, I got it all done. So yeah, and otherwise, and September and October are gonna be no easier, I feel like, because every weekend we have something going on. This weekend I have my cousin's seventh birthday party to go to, and then Sunday we have a wedding to go to, and then I feel like it's gonna go by so quick. Uh, Rhinebeck is gonna come up before you know it. So. And I'm super excited about Rhinebeck. I really am. Uh, I guess I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, what I'll be doing uh, closer to the date. So, but anyway, it's it's going to be so fun. Um, and I hope those of you who are going to Rhinebeck as well, if you see me, say hello. I would love to meet you. So don't be shy. Come up. I give hugs. So, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm trying to think what else is going on. Yeah. Um, I started working out a little bit. I don't, I wouldn't call, you know, I, I know people look at me and they're like, you don't need to work out, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I, I really do need to work out. I don't definitely do not get enough cardio. I think I've mentioned this before in the podcast. I have a treadmill, which I never use. Uh, and, but lately I've just kind of been inspired to just get moving. And if I can't run on a treadmill, it's like, okay, maybe I'll try some aerobics. And I went to crunchlive.com. Uh, Crunch is actually a gym here in the US. You might have heard of it, I don't know. But they have a website uh, called crunchlive.com and 
I, they have like a free trial uh, period where for 10 days you can basically sign up with them and then stream all these workout videos. They have really, they have quickies, like 15 minute core <laughs> workouts and then they have like 15 minute um, cardio and abs, butt and thigh. And I was like, hey, that sounds like a really good idea. So I signed up, did some, I did two workouts yesterday. It really kicked my ass. <laughs> I'm hurting today muchly. Um, but I did it and I think, you know, hey, if I can do maybe like 15 minutes to 20 minutes a day, more power to me. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I really hate working out. I really don't enjoy it at all, but I know I definitely need to get my heart rate up more often than I do. So I went for a bike ride today, so I think that counts. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see if I get around to working out today. But um, again, it's just something I'm trying We'll see if I even stick to it. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, that's pretty much what's going on over here. So I think I will leave it at that. Uh, so I will have a great week, everybody. Happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey, everyone. We're here at Gage Intention. I'm here with Nina from the Knitting Expat Podcast, Maria Hi. from the Sewing Knits Podcast, and Tanya. Hey. She doesn't have a podcast, but she should. And Allison <laughs> from Gage Intention. Hi. <laughs> so, everyone's watching. Okay. I'm going to give you a tour. Can we have some Charlie. nostalgias? Say hi, guys. Hey. Hi. <laughs> These lovely ladies made the trip out to Gage Intention. And here's my food. What are you guys getting? Outlander. Outlander, yay. <laughs> and sweaters. Hey everybody! <laughs> Let's take a look at yarn. <laughs> oh, hey! Melody just said hello oh. from Mandarins. <laughs> oh, hey! Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> just perfect. Tommy Patches. Nina, it's so awesome to meet you. Yeah. Hi, sorry to meet you. Alex. Alex. Hi, 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 Missed you. Come to come to New York, Laura. Well, if only, and then you have to come to Denver. Yeah, we have to make a Denver trip. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's so wonderful. Next month. Yay! I should do like Melody. You have to come too. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna explain why gauge intention is so. Sleeping awesome. Why is it awesome? Why is it awesome? Because of all the cool indie diary yarn that we got. Right. First off, I think I think it's like Lemonade Shop! Lemonade Shop! We just came in. We love Lemonade Shop. Hey Laura, Because it looks just We got spun right around. Yum. Yum yum. And yum, this yum. is actually Corey Dale Superwash sock. That's really cool. Ready? Mm -hmm. Plucky knitter. Plucky, plucky. Plucky. <laughs> Awesome colors. She's like, if you're a fool, what's up to get? Um, I'm kind of like, ooh, do you want to go Cashmere. Love the cashmere. Yum, yum. Yum. <laughs> I like skinny dipping. Skinny dipping. Yes, I interviewed her last year for the Road to Remix series. Definitely check that out. And there's still more podcasts. Um, and interviews coming up. I had to do a little mini blog embargo. The small fry found my blog. <laughs> I really love this combination right here. Right here, yeah. I just want to buy this trio right here. And then, what do we got? Western Sky Knits. Ooh, pretty. Is this the one that I got out in uh, Colorado? Really no, pretty. this isn't the one. Yum. Yum. BK weight. And then, Sleep Season. More sleep season. That's more skinny dipping. Sleep season is oh. yay down here. I love sleep season. Sleep season. Awesome, awesome stuff. I need a pair of socks with that. Yeah, highly recommend. And then hold up. Brooklyn tweed. We got Brooklyn tweed. <laughs> it's the wall of shelter. The wall of shelter. The wall of shelter. It's a shelter wall. And here we have. All the pretty sweaters. All the samples. Some show long designed. Ooh, lots of hearts on that one. <laughs> should we do my wall? Should do your wall. Of course we should do your wall. Yes, you get the tour now. So here we have Villain Vine Yarns. 
All the mixed colorways. So you have my water lily on display. And then... I think you should cut the colorways because you just nap them all. So. <laughs> We're like running we out, but yeah. Oh yes, anyway. Beemandaries. This place is paradise. It's, it's lovely. It is tiny but <laughs> mighty. Tiny but I love that. You have to show them the wallpaper because the wallpaper. Oh is yes. Amazing. Okay, so hold up. We also have some O wool here, and then the lighting is actually better on this end. O wool is lovely. And I just stole from the Brooklyn Craft Company. And look at that wallpaper. It is a knitted wall. Even more people are coming. And we also have fiber over here too. There's more. There's more. Yes, I didn't even know this. Too hot for that. It is too hot. <laughs> Laura wants the wallpaper. It's on um, Spoonflower. Spoonflower.com has it. I'm so like, uh, I'm on camera. That's okay. Everyone likes your dress. Thank you. Oh, do that again. Oh, they're asking if you made it. I'm just like scrolling. I did not make it.